I'm here with Dave Herman, who works at Mozilla and directs research here. Tell us how you got involved in Mozilla and open source projects. Uh, I was actually a graduate student um, at the time that I first got involved. Uh, I was interested in JavaScript and I was doing research in programming languages and I was spending some time learning about JavaScript and I wrote some web pages about it. And uh, out of the blue, uh, Brendan Eich, the CTO of Mozilla and uh, inventor of JavaScript, found the web pages that I had written and sent me an email and said that he was interested in talking to me about some of the things that I had learned and was doing. And um, that experience alone was incredibly eye-opening to me. It showed me that the assumptions that I had had about the boundaries between uh, research and industry, the boundaries between academia and industry, um, the boundaries between just uh, a person on the internet and the movers and shakers uh, in industry were a lot more porous than I realized. Um, and it showed that the web is this place that brings people together who might otherwise not have had any way of getting to know each other. Um, so that, that was very exciting and I, I started uh, talking with Brendan and talking with Mozilla and got involved with the ECMAScript Standards Committee, which is the standards committee that uh, that standardizes the JavaScript programming language. Um, so I was doing that while I was in grad school, and then when I finished grad school, I came to Mozilla full time. So a lot of the students in our class have only been programming for about seven weeks. Can they still get involved in open source projects, or do they need a lot more experience than that? Um, there's all sorts of ways of getting involved in open source projects. You don't have to be uh, a computer science wizard to contribute. Um, one of our uh, largest sources of uh, community volunteer work is localization, which is uh, basically translation. So uh, Firefox is developed in English and our official release is in English, um, but we actually have uh, close to a hundred uh, localized versions of Firefox in, in countries all over the world. So we have volunteers in communities that could be as large as many countries or that could be as, as small as in, uh, a small community in, in one country where um, anybody can simply provide translations of the menu items and the, the windows and dialog boxes. Uh, all of the stuff where we have to present something to the user, um, we do it in English and then you can translate it and now you can have contributed to your uh, uh, native languages version of Firefox. Um, another project that we started is a project called Universal Subtitles where uh, you can take YouTube videos that were recorded in one language and you can provide translation and the software will automatically create subtitles based on the translation that you provided. Um, so there's all sorts of ways that people contribute to uh, Mozilla software, to open source software in general, um, and it doesn't always have to be technical. It can be code and sometimes we end up hiring people who started out contributing code and ended up working on some of the uh, most advanced parts of our projects, but it also can be as simple as uh, editing documentation or providing translations. So we have a real wide range of different types of people in our class. Um, can you tell us something about, is it possible for, for anyone to get involved in open source software? One of the things that really appeals to me about open source software is the opportunity for a whole variety of people with backgrounds and different experiences and different interests to get involved with the project. A good example of this is if you look back to the Mozilla project in 2002 and 2003, we were sort of struggling along with this Netscape next generation Netscape communicator uh, browser suite. And, and one day a young 15 year old high school student showed up in one of our IRC channels where we all get together as engineers and testers and the people working all across the project and, and talk about the work we're doing. And he came in and said, I, I don't like the way this particular button behaves in, in Mozilla. Um, can someone fix that? And, and I reached out to him and I said, you know that button is actually powered by some simple JavaScript. You could look at the source code and maybe you could fix it yourself. And he said, well, I, I've put together a couple of web pages. I know some simple JavaScript. And before you know it, he was a dedicated member of the team. Only a few short months later, he was one of the founding members of the new Firefox project that would go on to reach 500 million users today. This is a 15-year-old high school student with no background in computer sciences. Um, he got involved. We had mentors who helped him learn the pieces he didn't know. He went and read books. And, and before you knew it, he was building uh, one of the world's most successful software products. 
We also have a number of students who come here either for uh, weekend work as uh, you know something to complement their education. We have people who are in the industry and have been developing software for as far back as the Fortran and COBOL days who are looking for something that's fresh and, and exciting and want to renew their skill set and see participating in open source software is a way to work with some of the younger people on some of the newer technologies and to refresh and get revitalized with their uh, computer um, uh, software uh, skill set and, and interests. We have people who are uh, who are part-time um, uh, Mozilla contributors working on it because they're interested in a particular feature set. We have uh, retirees and, and, and people who are, uh, have part-time jobs trying to fill the rest of their day uh, and who happen to know something uh, about what we're doing somewhere on the Mozilla project. Sometimes that's writing client software code in C++, but other times that's manning our volunteer support desks and helping Firefox users uh, fix problems with, with, the, uh, with their browsing experience. So open source really does, and many open source projects really do have multiple points where one can attach themselves to the project and find support and mentorship. And, and some of the places you attach yourself can be very simple. We'll often put some of our most valuable programming resources on very challenging projects and leave some of the easier or simpler features or smaller bug fixing uh, uh, un uh, owned, as it were, by a full-time staff member with the idea that that staff member can instead mentor a volunteer or a student or a retiree to go finish off that piece of the work. And this is a great learning experience and an opportunity to develop a set of skills that you can advance and grow and become involved more deeply with the project over time. Ultimately, uh, this young 15-year-old Blake Ross, who helped launch the Firefox project, uh, moved from fixing a couple of style issues using some you know JavaScript and CSS on toolbar buttons to being the authority on a bunch of the C++ code that made up Firefox and that was probably in a short time period maybe less than two years that he was able to make that progression almost exclusively through open source mentoring relationships on the Mozilla project.